Hi, welcome to a continuation of our discussion of equality constraint optimization given within the course on optimal and robust control at CTU in Prague. In particular, we are going to present second order sufficient conditions of optimality based on the so called projected Hessian. When looking for sufficient conditions of optimality for the constraint problem, you may feel uh, tempted to recycle the results for the unconstrained optimization and that is to find out the matrix of second or second derivatives and check if this matrix is positive definite at the critical point. In our case, I mean in the constraint optimization, the role of the original cost function is now played by the so-called Lagrange function. And this is a function of uh, two sets of variables, the original x variables and new artificial variables called Lagrange uh, multipliers. So we will now form a matrix comprised of, uh, of the second derivatives. And we will only focus on those uh, derivatives uh, with respect to the original optimization variable, which we will emphasize like this. And finally, we will only consider uh, the values of the optimization variables X and Lagrange multipliers at the critical point. Now, based on the definition of Lagrangian, we can uh, expand this into a sum of the Hessian of the original cost function. Now, I no longer need to emphasize that this is with respect to X because there is no other variable for F function plus sum of m terms and each term is always a Lagrange multiplier of course evaluated the critical point times Hessian matrix uh, corresponding to the given cost function. And now you may feel tempted to ask whether or not this is strictly greater than zero. Now, since this is matrix, this needs to be interpreted in the sense of matrices as, as positive definiteness. But let me now explain why this, why this procedure would be wrong. When testing positive definiteness, what we are actually doing is this. So we have the matrix that, uh, for, that we would like to test for positive definiteness. And now we are asking if the following scalar function is always positive. Right? This is how we test uh, for positive definiteness of a given matrix. Let me now uh, emphasize that this is uh, row uh, row vector. This is this is a square matrix and this is a column vector. So the result of, of this uh, product, this, of this multiplication is a scalar. And we just check if this scalar is always positive for whatever D vectors. This is the definition of positive definiteness of a matrix. But in our case, I mean, in the, the constraint optimization, we are not just interested in any, any D. We are only interested in those d, in, in such d vectors that lie in the tangent space, right? Which I can write like this. We are only interested in those d for which uh, the gradient of the, of the cost function is always orthogonal to such D. And this of course holds for all for all constraints. So clearly we are restricting our set of uh, acceptable Ds and it was not necessary to guarantee that the, the, the inequality over here will be satisfied just for any D. It would be too much. Let's now have a look at an example which will illustrate this nicely. 
I believe. So we would like to maximize the following function x1, x2 plus x2, x3 plus x1, x3 and subject subject to the following constraint x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 3. Now you may write down the Lagrangian. This will be of course a function of x1, x2, x3 and lambda. We will we only have a single equality here so just a single Lagrange multiplier and it's x1 x2 plus x2 x3 plus x1 x3 plus uh, lambda times x1 plus x2 plus x3 minus 3. Now I will leave it up to you to find out the gradient the gradient of L and in particular the gradient of L oh, sorry uh, well simply find the gradient of L on your own it will be a vector composed of uh, four entries and put it equal to zero and from this you will have x1 star x2 star x3 star and lambda star and then for these values evaluate the evaluate the uh, hessian you will find out that the matrix actually hessian evaluated at the critical point will be a matrix that looks like this it will be a matrix three times three matrix well um, here i'm only restricting i'm only taking the subset of the of the full hessian matrix so i'm only considering those entries that are related to differentiation with respect to x and now these entries are 0 1 1 1 0 1 uh, 1 1 0 For such matrix, its eigenvalues are 2, minus 1, minus 1. This means that the Hessian matrix is indefinite <coughs> and the problem seems that uh, it has no minimum or maximum that it's uh, at the critical point it's a saddle point but now have a look at uh, how we can take into consideration the fact that that d is not arbitrary but instead it must satisfy as we have already written up there it must satisfy the gradient of H we just have a single H at the critical point times the is equal to zero now the gradient of the gradient of H is equal to one 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 right have a look the the H function is is over here so this this is my H function so the gradient is always constant so the condition here is that I have a row matrix one 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 times times d is equal to zero but what what does this mean what is what is the algebraic characterization of this situation this simply says that d must be within so-called null space of the matrix 
of the matrix uh, that you obtain by taking gradient of H and its transpose. So in our particular case D must be within a null space of a matrix 1, 1, 1. Right? But we can write this equivalently as that D can be obtained uh, as some matrix Z times U where Z is a basis, actually orthonormal basis of, of the null space. And uh, U, U is arbitrary. see what we are, what I'm saying is that if D lies in a certain set in this case called null space I will find a basis for such set for the null space and then I express D as a linear combination of basis vectors so this matrix Z uh, its columns are actually uh, representing the basis of, of the null space now how do I find such basis Let's now turn a little bit more computational. So I will I will invoke MATLAB. And you can use you can use null function which computes exactly what you want. It com it gives you an orthonormal basis for the null space. In our case the, the this null space is two-dimensional so we have two columns so the matrix Z is formed by two columns over here so now once we have it now once we have it we can uh, replace where do we have where do we have the condition yep over here so let me now just uh, copy this so as you can as you can see here we can just replace these D by z times u. Now u is arbitrary as we have just uh, mentioned. So what we get is the following. We will get u transposed times z transposed times uh, Hessian times z times u. And now this is a new function that we will call projected Hessian <clears throat> and we can now check for positive definiteness of this new uh, matrix freely because uh, u is now arbitrary. Back to MATLAB here you can see that I formed the projected Hessian in the just described way and and this is the resulting the resulting Hessian matrix without computing the eigenvalues I can immediately conclude that the uh, eigenvalues are both negative hence the optimization problem has a local maximum at the critical point and that concludes our discussion of sufficient conditions of optimality for constraint problems.